Well, good morning and a very, very warm welcome from St. Barbara's this morning. Apologies for the slight delay and if you've had any problems joining in with us. It has been remarkable that actually for, this is our eighth Sunday of meeting together online. And this is the first time that we've actually had any hiccups. And that's hugely down to Simon, who's done an incredible job over the last few weeks. So, um, um, and if, you, if you're just joining now, just clicking on a few minutes late, well, you're, you're on time this morning, so it's good to have you with us as well. Just as we begin our service, a few things uh, for you uh, that you will need um, for the service. Um, you'll find having the Easter season, uh, Holy Communion season booklets uh, helpful to hand as we go through our responses. And also, if you'd like to join in with the words of the hymns that we'll be singing, I did send out to you a hymn sheet. Um, during the week and that's also on our website if you want to join in with the two hymns and songs that we'll be singing this morning and also if you want to have a piece of bread beside you as we uh, as later in the service we remember all that Christ has done for us um, please please make sure you've got uh, some a piece of bread to hand as as a reminder of all God's love to us also say to parents uh, that um, Sarah and Libby have already been busy this morning in producing another Hive video. And they've even, I've even got a craft this week to be able to highlight to you. There you go. And, uh, and they'll, so do go on to that either during the course of this service, if you've got a couple of devices at home, that, so, what, so the children can do that during the course of the ser service or after the service, please do enjoy the Hive materials with your children. And also uh, just uh, three birthdays this week. Uh, we've got congratulations to Joseph Owen, who's celebrating his birthday today, to Dan Rathbone, who's celebrating his birthday on Tuesday, and then to Alfie Manning, who will be 15 on Wednesday. So happy birthday to you all and many congratulations. I uh, hope you are able to have, celebrate in fine style over these coming days. As we have each Sunday during Easter, we will start by lighting the Paschal candle behind me. And it's a reminder of Christ's light shining into our world at this time. So we begin with the words of greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, we're going to sing our first song this morning, which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, a beautiful song that reminds us that wherever we are at this time, God is with us by his presence. And Libby is going to play this for us on the flute. Please do sing along with us.
Thank you, Libby. So let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus our Lord. Amen. So let us take a moment to confess before God our need of him and our need of his forgiveness. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Church's special prayer for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Well, as with last week, because we're going to be focusing on the New Testament reading during our sermon, we're going to read the Gospel reading first. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, 
that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And now Andrea is going to read for us our New Testament reading. Thank you, Andrea. This morning reading is taken from Acts 19. Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Svirko, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus, I know, And Paul, I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honour. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practised sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After two years, when Paul was preparing to leave Ephesus, there arose a great disturbance about the way. A silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there. He called them together along with the workers in related trades, and said, You know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business, and you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus, and in practically the whole province of Asia. He says that gods made by human hands are no gods at all. There is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis 
will be discredited. And the goddess herself, who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. When they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Soon the whole city was in an uproar. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Andrea. When the year 2020 began, we were, I guess, preparing ourselves for an ordinary year. There were a few normal news reports of, of an illness in a remote part of China, but nothing that really would affect us, we thought. But since then, our lives have been challenged in ways we could never have imagined. Things that we have taken for granted, plentiful food in shops, going to cafes and pubs, meeting up with friends and families, holidays, all have ceased to happen. The way we live has come under dramatic change. Much of how we are used to living has been shaken to the core. It's helpful to reflect on our experience and the emotions that we've experienced over this time as we come to explore Paul's time in Ephesus. Last week he was in Corinth and we explored his time there. Today we are continuing his journey as he went from Corinth to Ephesus. For Paul, he was in that city of Ephesus for two years. And during that time, he had a profound impact on the cultural, religious, political, and financial life of that city, shaking it to its very core. How people responded to the impact of Paul may give us a window into thinking about how we respond to the crisis of our own city and our own nation at this time. Well, we set up with the second half of the reading that Andrea read for us towards the end of Paul's time in the city. Ephesus was one of the great cities of the ancient world, situated in Western Turkey and commanding the trade routes between East and West. Not only that, it hosted one of the seven great wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Artemis. This was an architectural wonder, and maybe with the, um, the wonders of modern technology, I may also be able to show you, you may be able to see that, that's an artist's impression of what the Temple of Artemis looked like. It was one of the seven wonders of the world, not unlike the the pyramids of, of Egypt, the hanging gardens of Babylon, or the huge colossus that bestrode the port of ancient Rhodes. It was one of these wonders that people would flock to from across the Mediterranean world, coming from all over to worship and to sightsee. And when they came to the city, they would buy, just as tourists do today and religious worshippers buy today, they would buy little statues, silver statues of the temple or of the goddess Artemis. And in fact, archaeologists have found hundreds of these still within the remains of the city of Ephesus. So when Paul begins preaching a message that proclaims that Jesus Christ is the son of the only God and that these other temples and idols, well, there is really little point to them there is a direct attack on the lives of those who are making all these silver um, statues and all those involved in associated trades along with the temple. And so, as we heard in our reading, a huge crowd forms and a riot is stirred. Imagine a partisan football crowd outraged by several decisions made by the ref that seem to have gone against their team in a crucial match and the anger that boils up, begin to get a taste of it. Or cast your minds back a few months to when there were thousands of people on the streets of Iran, all chanting and protesting against American aggression 
and you begin to tap into some of the anger, some of the fear, some of the furious nature of the crowd whipping themselves up into a frenzy. This was a crowd angry, wanting to blame someone. I fear a time may come when a tipping point is reached in our own country, when people's remarkable compliance, patience, and forbearance with the lockdown may turn to something slightly less positive, maybe a frustration at the, the extent in which the lockdown is continuing, maybe an anger and bitterness at the financial crisis we may well be heading for, and a desire to find someone to blame. Loss of income, damaged economic interests are powerful stirrers of anger, whether in Paul's day or in our own. A summer, an autumn, maybe indeed a winter of discontent may not be too far off. And the question is, how will we respond? Will we choose to join that crowd demanding retribution for our own financial loss? Or will we choose to stand up and work and pray for the common good, even if that comes at a cost? learning from our mistakes, holding each other accountable, looking out for the poor and vulnerable will undoubtedly be positive steps forward in the way ahead. Looking for scapegoats to blame, far less so. In the months ahead, will we identify ourselves with the crowds led by Demetrius or by the Christians who courageously and graciously stood up for a greater truth. But earlier in his time in Ephesus, in the first part of the reading that Andrea read, Paul had already rocked the boat, not amongst the financial sector this time, but amongst the religious sector, amongst the magic workers and the exorcists in the city. Ephesus, as well as being the home to the worship of the goddess Artemis, was also a religious and cultic melting point, a place that attracted people from every religion and sect. It was a place where the supernatural was normal, where belief in sorcery and magic was commonplace. So when people begin to discover the impact of the name of Jesus to heal people, they quite readily absorb the name of Jesus into their own healing and exorcism rituals particularly one, a Jewish pagan cult that we heard of, the sons of Sceva, who went round trying to heal people in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. But their presumption quickly backfires. Jesus is not a name to be chanted in some quasi-magical incantation. He is a person to be worshipped and to be in relationship with this is another huge challenge to the way of life in Ephesus. We've seen how Paul's message had challenged the economic life of the city. Here the message challenges also its religious presumptions. Faith is not about tapping into a divine power source to gain mystical or supernatural abilities. It is about relationship, specifically being in a loving relationship with God through Jesus. This is the great theme of Paul's letter to the Ephesian church a couple of years later, and which many of us have been reading through during our daily devotion emails. There in his letter to the church, Paul writes, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Not only that, but Paul prayed that the Ephesian Christians would know that they had been chosen by God before the creation of the world to be his beloved children on whom he had lavished his grace and love. Made for relationship our identity in God. It's a message that speaks to our times. As our way of life gets challenged and shaken, 
our identity comes from Christ, from knowing him through prayer and worship, through the study of his word. At times of large change, knowing who we are matters hugely. Paul's message, message back then is God's message to us today. We are first and foremost children of God, loved by him and made for relationship with him. Nothing that we experience in our lives, for good or for ill, can change that essential truth. And it's worth noting that as the city of Ephesus reeled from the challenges of the gospel message, not all rejected that message. Many did come to believe, and a thriving church was established. I read just this morning that during this time of lockdown, over a quarter of this country's population have tuned in to church services online, about four times the average number of people that would normally attend church. People are looking for that sense of meaning, that sense of identity that faith can bring. And those who came to faith in Ephesus valued their newfound identity in Christ. They valued it so highly that they were willing to sacrifice a great deal. Luke tells us that many of them burned their pagan sorcery scrolls worth 50,000 drachma. In today's money, that's a, at a conservative estimate, about three or four million pounds worth of scrolls and books that they just got rid of, destroyed, as they turned from their old lives to embrace Christ fully. Many sacrifices may be asked of us in the coming weeks and months as we seek to love God and neighbour in these challenging times. Standing up for the common good, rejecting the desire to blame and shame, not putting our own financial concerns before those in even greater need. All of those things will ask much of us. But knowing that we are loved by God, knowing that our identity comes from being his children, will give us all the strength and the hope that we need at this time. May God bless us. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. And now Keith is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Thank you, Keith. Lord, we pray that we are able to fully embrace the words of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Lead us, Lord, to a better place where we can grow as individuals and make a difference to the lives of people we know and to those we have yet to know. We pray that in these difficult times, we are, we are able to show our joy and gladness at being part of your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. In the Anglican Communion, we give thanks for the Church of Bangladesh, and pray for its disaster management work. As the impact of climate change becomes more evident in rising sea levels, may the church succeed in its objectives of education, raising awareness and risk management. In our diocese on World Lupus Day, we pray for all who live with this systemic autoimmune disease and for better understanding of this complex and difficult condition. We pray for a greater general awareness of lupus. 
And we thank you, Lord, for the many volunteers from the churches, mosques, temples and gurdwaras in our city, working alongside other charity teams and individuals, helping those in need with food deliveries, telephone calls. And we especially thank you, Lord, for their love and care for their fellow men and women. Strengthen in the service of Christ, Christopher and John, our bishops, the clergy, readers, and lay people in our churches as they continue to meet the challenge of maintaining worship in our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, comfort all who are worrying about their jobs, their reduced income, and simply for what the future holds for their families and friends. Many people are anxious about returning to work with its implicit risks of closer contacts after these weeks of isolation. And we pray that their fears can be allayed to a degree by employers and employees showing true compassion and understanding by adhering strictly to what new rules may be set and thereby keep everyone safe. <clears throat> Excuse me. We pray for our leaders facing their own doubts as to whether they are doing the right things to tackle the crisis. Grant them wisdom and integrity in what they do. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish, we pray for all who live in Woodfield Road and for the residents and staff of Elsie Jones House. In our CTEC prayer cycle, we pray for the members of St Mary Magdalene Church and their, their vicar, the Reverend Dwayne Eng. We pray for good health for all essential workers in the health and social services, for the bin men, for transport drivers, for shop workers, for the police and emergency services. And we pray for friends and neighbours who we know from these services going off to work every day. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. From our own congregation, we name Stephanie Cotton, Monica Harrison, Dorothy Hope, Gwyn Morgan, Wenna Hughes and Lisa Murray. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And Lord, we pray for young people suffering mental health issues due to this current crisis. Lord, help us to get them, help them to get through this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Eileen Eccles, Dorothy Stott and George Alvin. We pray for their families and friends in the knowledge that their bereavement is even more difficult because most are not permitted to be at their funerals. We pray that memories of their loved ones will be a comfort to them. In annual remembrance, we name Rita Watkin, Cyril Carlton, and Joseph Connor. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keith, thank you. Well, let us share the peace with those with whom we are sharing this service. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. 
Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so we continue as we pray the prayer of preparation of the table. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gates of eternal life. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Christ will come again in glory. Hallelujah. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us with your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son jesus christ our lord through him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven 
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 blood of Christ shed for you. blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And so we pray together our prayer after communion. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our second hymn now, which is, O oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. And Peter's going to help play this for us. So let's join in as we sing, O oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend.
Thank you, Peter. I hope you were able to join in at home. We we were competing with the trumpet here in our in our study, and uh, hopefully Peter drowned our singing out. So thank you, Peter. Just before the blessing, just to say, first of all, as as we all know, we're waiting to hear uh, a government announcement later this evening um, as to what the the next steps will be according to the lockdown. If there anything changes with church, we're not expecting anything dramatic to change. Um, but if anything does change in terms of meeting together and church services, I will let you know as soon as I hear from from the Church of England nationally. I will send out an email uh, to let you know, and we'll also put something on the website as well. But at the moment, we're not expecting anything dramatic to change at this point. Also, just to say, uh, please do continue to give each other a ring. Uh, I know what a huge encouragement it is. As, I, as I've been speaking to people on the phone over the, over the last few days, I know just what it means when people receive phone calls from one another. So uh, at the end of the service, do uh, go and make yourself a cup of tea, coffee, get yourself a biscuit, and then do give somebody else a ring. So our final blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who fill the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.